connected. Hey guys, welcome to Woodsman Adventures. Today I'm going to be installing the uh, foot peg brace for the Africa Twin. It goes on the right side. It's really prone to breaking the foot peg if you lay it over because the the bracket that holds the peg is just cast aluminum. And this is from Camel ADV Products. Um, this is the Camel Brace Plus. You can also get a smaller one that doesn't cover. This here also protects the exhaust too underneath from uh, rocks and stuff that your skid plate normally wouldn't cover. So it's an added bonus to have this. For like 20 bucks higher, it's probably a real good deal to get this. Comes with all the bolts, stuff you need, uh, brackets, the instructions. Uh, a complete kit to do it. You have to remove the exhaust pipe, which we're going to do in the video, and uh, install the brackets, put the exhaust pipe back on, and then put this on. So, uh, or install the one bracket. And then uh, it's sure going to be worth it to save your uh, bike, because if you break that foot peg when you're out on a trip somewhere and ain't got a foot peg to come home, uh, that's going to ruin your whole week or your day, your ride, all together. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at the peg and I'll show you what I'm talking about and we'll get started on the install. Okay, as you can see here, this is the factory uh, stand, basically standoff that holds the foot peg and it's cast aluminum here on this right side by the exhaust. And uh, of course this is an aftermarket peg, but either one if you got stock foot pegs, that, that has nothing to do with it. The problem is, is whenever you uh, break this off, when you lay it over, this only folds up here and you hit the bottom of this right here on the ground, rock, whatever, well it breaks this off right here. And when it does, you have no place to put your foot. You can't put your foot on the brake pedal. I guess you could stick it up on the crash bar, it'd be pretty uncomfortable. Especially if you're riding off-road, that'd be kind of hard to do, but uh, I don't ever want that to happen, so I'm going to put this Camel Adventure um, brace on here. And we'll solve the problem before it happens. So it's inevitable that I'm going to crash or lay it over something, and I got all the crash bars in the world. Ain't going to save this from breaking off if if you lay it over and break it, it hit this. So we'll get this thing changed out and see what it takes to do it. Okay, the first part of my video is I'm going to have to remove the all rider skid plate. We'll put the bracket, take the exhaust off, put the bracket on. Then we'll put this exhaust back on the skid plate just up temporarily so we can see in case we have to do any trimming on the skid plate uh, to make it work. So I'll take off this skid plate and then we'll take a look at what it takes to get the exhaust off. Alright, the first part we're going to do on the uh, exhaust is, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of hard lighting, hard spot to get the camera to, but there's two flange bolts for this side the exhaust pipe and there's one on that side with two bolts for the flange and they're 12 millimeter so you just need a 12 millimeter socket and extension to take them off and we'll remove the two on the other side and this side here probably a little easier to see got better lighting and a better angle to get to them all right on this side of the bike uh, under the lower part of the exhaust we have a 12 millimeter bolt here we can use a ratchet on this side and a 12 millimeter wrench on this side. I have a ratchet wrench actually, so reach up in there. You may or may not have the center stand on your bike. I have the center stand here, and this is the all rider skid plate for the center stand, so you may not have that. And it shouldn't be in the way, anyhow. Pull that bolt off here and lay it down. All right, on the upper side of the muffler, we have a Allen bolt here looks to be a number six Allen wrench. The bolt wrench the exhaust is going to come down when you do it. Okay, one thing I about forgot to tell you is I've got it unplugged here, but there's an O2 sensor on the exhaust pipe and it just plugs in right here. It's kind of really hard to see with the camera, but it's one of those where you just push the button here on the outside of this, push this and pull it off and then there's a little quick snap tab right here that pops in a hole so pull that off before you let it down you don't want to pull your wire out of your O2 sensor and mess it up right, we'll just set a block of wood right here under that exhaust to hold it right there from coming completely off with my bike 
uh, strap down on the thing and the front end's pulled down and the fender extender I got on there they don't want to let the exhaust come off really easy so that's okay we'll just let it down out of the way and I think we can do our work right here this is the next step here is we're going to take this bolt out here which is a 10 millimeter allen bolt just remove it All right, now we're gonna take the flat washer that come with it. We're gonna set it right in this hole, and it's the one that, when you set it on there, it makes it just flush. Fits just flush in there. Okay, ain't gonna stay there until I get some, but I'm gonna take my bolt here, put a little bit of thread locker on there. Put my bolt through my bracket. Put the washer on. And tighten this down. I don't want to tighten this super tight yet. I don't want it to where I can still move it, but I'll snug it down tight enough that I can still move it a little bit. Let's hold this bracket down there. About where it's flush on the bottom. It'll be pretty close. Now I'll tighten it up. But just uh, leave it loose enough that I can still move this bracket a little bit. I'm going to have to lower my exhaust down a little bit to get to this a little better. Like so. Hopefully you can see the bracket get to here. Now I'm going to take this one here and just bolt it up on here. Okay, I'm going to take my two supplied flathead bolts. And for right now, I'm not going to put any Loctite on these. I'm just going to put them in by hand and snug them up good. Take my ratchet and just snug them up a little bit. All right, now I'm going to remove my foot peg. A lot of foot pegs are different. Um, this one here is night design foot pegs, but uh, they're all going to be similar. So I'm going to squeeze this, take the pin out, not lose my washer, pull the pin out. Get the peg out of the way. Now I can take this bracket right here, set it on here. And I want to take the two shoulder bolts, stick them up through here. Now this will come off too. I'm not going to put Loctite on these later. Well, actually these will, don't have to tighten these up all the way yet either. Leave them a little bit loose so I can work with it. All right, now I'll take my 6 millimeter Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter wrench to hold on to the nuts with, the nylock nuts. And just crank them down where they're snug. Don't want to have to be tight right now. Okay, now we're going to take the 11 millimeter spacer that come with it, set it in here. Take our bolt. We'll be using for the peg. Put it in here to line this up. Take a nylon lock nut. Tighten this up. I, what I want to do is make sure that everything is solid and in place where it's going to be for when I drill the hole in my bracket, which I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to take a, a Sharpie. This is a gold Sharpie. You can use a pencil, whatever you got, and I'll mark this bracket so I know where it's at when I take this loose and I keep my bracket in the right spot for when I drill this hole right here. I'll drill this hole out 5 sixteenths through the aluminum so this way to keep it lined up in the correct spot. Alright, now I want to take this bolt out 
uh, or take this bolt out and then I'll take these two here out and take this skid plate out of the way. Okay, we got our bracket out of the way. Now we can take a 516 drill bit and drill this hole. All right, I've got my 516 drill bit, 8 millimeter 516, whatever you want to call it. We'll drill this plumb through the aluminum bracket, make sure they were lined up here first. So it ain't gonna move. Bump my camera. Okay, we got that drilled out. All right, now we'll take the supplied bolt that came with it and uh, put it in here with a flat washer on the back and a nylock nut that came with it. Okay, so this side here is a 10 millimeter socket. Back side's a 13 millimeter wrench. Now we'll go up front with our 8 millimeter Allen wrench. Tighten the front bolt. Okay, now we're solid. Now, after we got all this done right here, we can put our exhaust back up on. Alright, now I'm going to put my lower exhaust bolt on here. Put a little Loctite on that. Pull the exhaust up into place. And what I did up front was I uh, I took the acorn nuts and on those bolts I put some anises on them. You always want to put anises on them because later on down the road you'll appreciate that when you have to take them off and they've seized on there. So anises is really nice. Everything else you'll lock tight, but anises those exhaust bolts where the acorn nuts go on. And then I just run them up with my 12 millimeter socket and the extension and run them up just finger tight until we get this bolted up and uh, not tightened. We'll, we'll tighten those first, but we'll bolt this up into place to hold it lined up straight. Then we tighten the acorn nuts up. Then we'll come back and tighten these two back here. All right, now I'm going to take my top bolt up here, put a laying of C's on it. It's the one that came off when you took it off. Use the uh, flat washer that came on there. Stick this bolt back in. Take the number six. We're going to run this in. Like I said, we're not going to actually tighten this one up yet. Then we'll go tighten those four acorn nuts up. Then we'll come back and tighten this bolt and the lower uh, exhaust bolt and our exhaust be back and finished up and done. All right, now I'm going to take this bottom plate here, take my flathead bolts. Put some anises on both of them. And we're going to bolt this up on here. Run the bolts up where they're good and snug here. Okay, now I'm going to take my foot peg and set it back into place. I'm going to use the bolt that Camel supplied here, the long bolt. You just have to wiggle this around a little bit to get your bolt lined up with the hole. Now this is the spacer we used whenever we used to tighten it up. Depending on what uh, which one you use, there's three different spacers. There's a 11 mil spacer, you got a three mil space and a six mil spacer. And what you do is we're going to line this bracket up. Right there it lines up. So we just need to find out when it's tightened up, which spacer we're going to need. And mine is probably going to be this one, which is the six millimeter. We'll try it and find out if that's going to be the right one. The 
maybe a little thick. You may have to try the three and see how it works. So what we want is this bracket to tighten down and with our nut on here we use one of these flat washers and a nylock nut and we want this thing to tighten down to where the nylock is holding it and the bolt won't the nut won't come off but yet we don't tighten it so tight that this foot peg don't move freely so we got this kind of loosened up this bottom bracket so we can line it up into place then I'll take and snug this thing down and see when I do that I'm gonna get it too tight and how the peg won't go down so we want to uh, loosen that back off I may not be able to use this washer on the back side on mine because I want to make sure that my bolt goes through this nylock nut enough that it's hitting the nylon so it'll stay on there. You can also, and it wouldn't hurt a bit, to put a little bit of thread locker on there just in case to keep that from coming off on you. We're going to loosen this up so our peg, see that's a little stiff right there so we'll back it off a little bit. We want our peg to go up and down freely, like that. So that'll be tight enough on that bolt right there. These pegs are extremely thick right here, is uh, what the deal is. So uh, a lot of pegs won't be this thick, but these are uh, made out of billet aluminum, the night design pegs, and they're extremely thick. But that right there, I can feel it's all the way to the end, so it's in the nylon. and. Uh, it's not tight enough that it's going to lock it up. And now we'll snug up these bolts back on the bottom here. Now that's a little bit tight right now, so I need to back it off just a hair. In other words, just a skosh. Like that. Now we're free, we're tightened up, we're still in the nylon, and we're good to go. This thing is real nice because it's going to brace this thing from a forward impact, or if you drop off in a rut or something, you hit real hard, hit a log, it's going to brace this thing. Uh, your peg from busting off this, of course, this mount right here, from a frontal impact, an up impact, this thing is solid as a rock. Now I'll take my skid plate and make sure my skid plate is going to fit with this on here. Alright, one thing I forgot to tell you, because I forgot myself, was to remember to plug your O2 sensor in. Um, I should have done it when my exhaust was down and it was easy to get to, but I didn't. But I still reached up in there with my fingers, just barely, and I got it snapped back into place. But I put, did put a little bit of dielectric grease on it uh, to make sure it's sealed, because it will dry out over time. All electrical connections will do that so and then snap it back up on there so don't forget that all right I stuck my skid plate back up there but didn't tighten it up just stuck a few bolts in it to hold it in place and as you can see my skid plate overlaps this a little bit and it will not go up all the way so there's not actually much to it but I will need to notch this skid plate out a little bit this all rider skid plate all right so what I'm gonna do is notice where the back of it is with my finger here and then I want to mark this all rider skid plate to where I need to notch it to go around that let's leave a little bit of clearance so we don't want it to uh, rub them to rub together just like that now I'll take this off and I'll notch this out all right now I'm going to take the sawzall and notch this out Whoop. 
like so. And I'll take an angle grinder and just kind of clean it up a little bit so it looks a little better and take off the burrs and sharp edges. All right, now I got a deburred and sharp edges knocked off. I might want to straighten this out a little bit, but if it fits, I really don't have to. You can see that at my angle, I'm not straight here, but I didn't mark it straight, so we'll see how it fits like this first. may not even have to do that. All right, guys, we got it all finished up. You can see here where I notched it, plenty of room, so I didn't have to actually take no more off of that. It still will be great. It's uh, This is hanging just a hair lower than the all rider skid plate. All rider skid plate is about the finest finish tucked up that you're going to get and still have great protection. Uh, so it's it's really high up there but the Camel ADV bracket quarter inch this thing is massively strong. This thing is built like a tank so I highly recommend that you go and get one of these whether you ride on highway because it can happen on asphalt, it can happen off-road it doesn't matter if you fall over and you bust that it's going to cost you a lot of money for the bracket and it's going to cost you a lot of agony having to ride your bike without uh, a foot peg until you get that or get home from your long trip wherever you've been. So I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to Camel ADV below in the description so you can go get one of these. You can either get this one and I recommend this one for another 20 bucks uh, to get this with the extra skid plate to it covers your exhaust up under here that none of the skid plates do. So this way you got full protection of your skid plate, you got your skid plate over your exhaust, you got your peg bracket. Uh, this thing is highly recommended by me. Uh, it's really, it wasn't a hard install at all. Uh, and it will be worth it when you're done to get this thing and put it on there. But that thing is solid as a rock. I don't, won't have no worries now about pretty much anything on my bike breaking because I'm bashing on a rock or falling over. So, I'll put a link in the description below, like I said. Thank you all for watching Woodsman Adventures. Please click the subscribe button. Please click the thumbs up on this video. And check out Camel ADV. Catch you all in the next video.